very high level of resistance. So what we don't know is, well, if you use this in the field, are you using enough to cause this resistance, or maybe I'm mixing it with other pesticides, that will be less, less of a problem. So there's definitely this really big question mark that we're just not too sure about at the moment. Yeah, I, I just lo you know really love how using science kind of continues to improve on all this stuff. And, and the related technologies, right? We're talking about vaccines to kill viruses, uh, respiratory viruses for, to cure pandemics, and we're also using <laughs> very similar technology to fight uh, fungus and keep our crops healthy. So uh, it's just interesting, this cross-section. And for this, uh, these RNA sprays, you know, they're not meant to uh, completely take away other pesticides. They're just going to be new tools to be used. So a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Matt Reynolds, senior writer at Wired, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, You're listening to the Daily Dive Weekend Edition on KFI AM 640 and everywhere in the iHeartRadio app. I'll be back with some more top stories from the week. But first, let's get an update from the KFI Newsroom. KFI 24-hour newsroom. A 60-year-old man who'd been sitting at the top of the Vincent Thomas Bridge in San Pedro since early Friday has come down. CHP officer Edgar Figueroa says the man who'd been up on the bridge for more than a day has turned himself into police. The bridge over the Los Angeles Harbor that links San Pedro with Terminal Island was closed in both directions but has reopened. The feds say Americans are continuing to quit their jobs at a record pace. The Labor Department says 4.4 million workers quit their jobs in September, which is the second month in a row of record-setting resignations. The White House Press Secretary, Jen Fossey, says the numbers aren't necessarily a bad thing. I don't think we should undervalue the fact that many workers feel this is a time to look for a better job with greater pay and more benefits. There are more than 10 million jobs open across the country. So, how weather from KFI brought to you by Sanofi Pasteur. Sunny and hot, mid 70s to mid 80s at the beaches, oh upper 80s to mid 90s in Metro LA and OC, mid 80s to low 90s in the Inland Valleys, and upper 80s to low 90s in the Inland Empire. DE Local from the KFI 24 hour newsroom. I'm Brian Bruman. Checking KFI traffic, we do have a crash in the Irvine area. Five stops on before Jeffrey Road, that's blocking the three by lane traffic back up to Calder Drive. New Ontario on the 10th, the and the 15th. Two by lane is off the first time on Monday. Vacation. And three south of the way, look out for a rack on the 110 southbound at MLK Junior Boulevard. The two by lanes are blocked there. KFI in the sky helps get you there faster. I'm Johnson White. He takes two vaccines to help protect you with fever, with flu, and COVID-19. And now you can get both of them at the same time. Learn more at cdc.gov.com. Talking about the next half day. Hey, Donate your car today with 1877 Car Secure. We'll recognize 501c3 charity organization. So you'll receive a maximum tax deduction. What's more, you'll receive a vacation voucher of three days and two nights. Also on the web at carsforkids.com. 1877 Car Secure. Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. It's parents. We've done everything we can to keep our kids safe, happy, and healthy during this pandemic. From finding the best face mask to making sure their hands are clean. And now we have the best tool to help keep them even safer. The most important thing we can do is vaccinate our kids to protect them against COVID-19. Vaccines have been proven safe and effective for children 5 and up. Talk to your child's doctor or visit myturn.ca.gov to find a vaccine near you. Brought to you by the California Department of Public Health. Low-income homeowners may qualify for a supplemental grant that covers up to 100% of the cost of a seismic retrofit through the Earthquake Break and Bolt program. To learn more, go to EarthquakeBreakBolt.com. In the 90s, Bruce Willis couldn't avoid the spotlight until he discovered a tiny mountain town. On the podcast Haleywood, discover what happens when Hollywood glamour collided with the small town values of Haley, Idaho. It's a tale people close to Bruce Willis have never been seen on telling, but it's a story the people of Haley are recounting in detail for the very first time. Listen to Haleywood at H-A-I-L-E-Y on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. Brought to you by DuckDuckGo. Protect your privacy online for free with DuckDuckGo. The holidays are right around the corner. If you or somebody you know needs 
talk to SoCal Honda dealers most of your story. Submit a voice message or text message by visiting KFIAM640.com keyword helpful. And the helpful Honda guys and gals in blue will help bring you some holiday cheer. You know, for the past 10 years, you have generously given to Catalina Club, raising millions of dollars and hundreds of tons of food. But here's the thing about hunger. It doesn't end with one meal. Right. The kids also oh, sure. eat every day. And KFI remains committed to keeping those children fed. Proxathon 2021, our 11th annual, is coming soon. Join us on Giving Tuesday, November 30th on KFI AM640. More streaming and we talk. This is KFI AM640, heard everywhere in the iHeartRadio app. I'm Austin Ramirez, and you're listening to the Daily Dive Weekend Edition. Inflation has also been a big story for the week, which prices up 6.2% last month, which is the largest rise in the <coughs> year. Supply chain issues continue to be the main culprit for a post-pandemic wave. For more on this, we'll speak to Kevin Deegan, reporters, and New York Magazine. Right now, we are looking off, but I think this is happening across the board because we have a problem with the supply chain, and there are a lot of people who have a lot of money. They have a lot of money saved up because they got to work from home, and they got to save it for the stuff, and they weren't going to so much. So that means that companies know that people can spend a lot of money. We're talking about the consumers make up two thirds of the economy. So the reason why we're seeing that in some ways is because companies know that they can charge more and people will pay. And, you know, we see wages go far low in certain cases, and uh, so some of those gains are just kind of being wiped out by all these higher prices now. Wages have gone up a little bit, not as much as people are seeing in the grocery store or at the gas station, right? Our gas is up almost 50%, and it's going to get worse because fuel oil, and all those people use to keep their houses, is up even more. So, you know, a lot of people have seen their wages increase because they changed jobs or because they were in a position to demand more money from their employers. But one of the problems here is whether this is going to continue to outpace how much people are getting paid. And it effectively means that people have gotten less money for the past year. What do you hear when it comes to the White House? Uh, yeah, right. I've heard everybody saying this could be transitory, you know, maybe temporary, but, you know, a lot of this stuff is tied to the supply chain issue that, you know, we talked about that on the podcast for a lot, and we, we know that it's a problem right now getting all those goods yeah. stuck out of the sea and just kind of getting things delivered on time. But what we're hearing is that the supply chain yeah. issues are going to go well into 2022. So, does that mean that inflation, the high inflation that we're experiencing now is going to last that long as well? Well, part of the reason why oh. inflation is up so much is because last year, at this time, it was just felt pretty flat. Right? Oh. We're still dealing with countries going down during the pandemic time. So, look, it really oh. needs to be how much this will. Uh, how much price is arrived or how long it will sell. But if it continues at this rate, that would be very about Biden has said that this is a major priority for him. In fact, it's such a priority that in the middle of the environmental climate going on, he is urging the OPEC countries to produce more oil because he's very really adding that it's, it's a political liability for him. People need to fill up their cars. And even though your car might be it's probably worth more than a Most people can't just sell it for years. So it is a big political liability for Biden. But there's no such thing to it. Oh, this is a global problem. What are some of the traditional remedies you have to find? Oh, oh, oh. Well, they're not very fun. It's increasing interest rates. It's making it more expensive to borrow. It's making it more expensive to take out a mortgage. Um, Those are all the things so, that we've been keeping low up until this point. Exactly. When Paul Volcker was the head of the Fed, he spiked the interest rates. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's deliberately, it was a way to stop the economy out of taking inflationary that pressure that were you know, making it so difficult to go grocery shopping to, to buy food for your family. And it was a very tough business time, but it's ultimately 
which worked to some extent. Uh, so it was a very bad success, even though there were you know, other reproductions that uh, went along with it. But it's probably not what the Bible book would have liked to do, but that you know, is yeah, definitely something that needs to get under control. Obviously, those paychecks just aren't going as far as when everything costs so much. But you did mention, you know, in the article, there are some other positive signs for the economy as well. Hiring is strong, and a couple other things you know, we talked about people saving up more money. So there are some good signs still, at least. It's just this is the one thing, I mean, this is one of the big things you got to get under control. This is not like the 1920s, right? You have unemployment that is... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Are coming out of a, a very quick recession, people's wages are rising. And, you know, despite the fact that there are these supply chain issues, we're not seeing gas volumes. People are able to, to get food, maybe it's not exactly what they want when they want it. So, it's not a good point. Well, we'll continue to see uh, the effects of this and, uh, and how we uh, try to remedy it. Kevin Jurgen, reporter at New York Magazine. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for quickly approaching. We're hearing that it will be much more expensive this year. Wow. There might be a turkey shortage. The expensive part is true, but there won't be a mass shortage of turkeys. Rather, it just might be difficult to find the one you want. Last year, small birds were all the rage because of smaller family gatherings. This year, it's all about the mid-sized birds. So now you want to start shopping now, we'll speak to Emily Stewart, senior reporter at Vox. So the one I'm going to do is kind of like talk to you about this, kind of put this in a way that I thought was good, which was, we don't have a cookie shortage. It's not like farmers, but we don't have a rate of being cookies. But the problem is that there are all these different disruptions on the supply chain, so basically mean that it's not that there aren't any cookies, it's that the cookies are in the wrong places at the wrong time in some instances, right across industry, across industry, we hear stories about supporting issues, about cooking, about labor services. This is happening in the cookie industry, you know, the way the cookies can cook with the morning, which it goes at the farm, it goes to the processor, then it, you know, gets shipped to storage or back or to the store. So what's going on there is that at the processing plant, the retail plant, mostly plants, uh, they're having a hard time finding workers, they're having a hard time finding workers, that's going on now. There is an issue with the stands in with protein. Again, it has multiple industries, because these are not immune to that. So maybe it's just more expensive to get the turkey from point A to point B. So that's some of the stuff that's going on in terms of like, whether or not you want to see the turkey down again. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's just a lot of different kind of consumer trends that you know, people aren't quite sure what people are going to want. If you think back to mm-hmm. last year, you know, people were still getting turkeys. Oh, I like it. But if you wanted smaller turkeys, maybe before you were getting a turkey for 20 people, and then you getting four turkeys for five people. Yeah, and that's one of the interesting things because, uh, you know, the farmers and everybody, people are supposed to be wrong. They're right. basically having to guess what that number will be, what size birds people are going to want. And uh, as you know, kind of what we're, what we're saying, so they're having to guess the turkeys. It's just they're having to guess what kind of turkey you might want, seeing as how the pandemic kind of flipped everything on its head. Exactly, and they think maybe this year that people will be you know, gathering yeah. different groups together, yeah. bigger turkeys, yeah. bigger turkeys, yeah. turkeys, yeah. turkeys yeah. kind of yeah. yeah. to one grocer who is like a house opposite Thomas Lester, small turkeys. But at the same time, you know, a lot of kind of industry groups are pushing like. You might need to deal with leftovers, right? Like, you just kind of, you know, the same way you can just get the COVID shot, like, you just get you by. Give the turkey that you can find. And so, if you have fewer leftovers, it's going to love turkey leftovers. That's a great tip right there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about cost. You mentioned some of it already with the supply chain issues. The shipping costs are pretty oh, crazy right now. To move anything around the country oh, is much more expensive. Oh, but also feeding the turkeys has become more expensive. We're looking oh. at rising corn and soybean costs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so it's definitely been more expensive to get the turkey grown and feed what? the forest. Um, and prices are up. And one farmer I'm trying to get this, and I've had to get a little bit of my price down, but I have to go to the store and get all of them. I think it's interesting to kind of put things on the line here and for more maybe is that turkeys are a lot cheaper for grocery stores, which means they're not making a bunch of money off of, of turkeys. The idea is that they give you some sort of a deal, entice you with the turkeys, but you walk into the store and buy your entire Thanksgiving meal um, at the store. So it's not quite clear yet, at least 
everything very high mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. Like, this camp we're going to be there because these are going to be super expensive this year or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that being said, everything else that you buy for your Thanksgiving meal is probably going to be a little bit pricier because everything's pricier. There's actually a turkey report that comes out. So this is coming from the Department of Agriculture. They're saying whole frozen turkeys are already about 26 cents more a pound than they were in the past year so but, but as you mentioned you know the way the oh the end retail so. so that might be a little different they're they're enticing to get in there for other stuff and, and you know the numbers are crazy right there's an estimated 46 million turkeys that are eaten on each given day in the u.s nine and ten americans eat turkey so yeah. uh, the demand is there and, and all of this is to say really start getting that turkey now, whether it's a frozen one and you want to get that right size and keep it, if you're going to get a fresh one, good luck ordering one, right? But but you got to start now. Uh, you can't really wait for the week before to do it. I mean, Stuart, I've seen your report out of box. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You're listening to the Daily Guys Weekend Edition on KFI AM 640. When we come back, we'll take you inside a fast food rebellion at a McDonald's in Bradford, Pennsylvania. The fourth of the nineteen, we used to go with our kids with my son to school. That's the first one in one century. Now, we worry about the way they think. How they will adapt to so many things. No matter what your concerns are, Cal Hope can help. It's free in most multiple cases. Thank you, thanks. Call 
This is Terrifying AM 640, heard everywhere in the I Heard Radio app. I'm also the mayor, and you're listening to the Daily Guys, Link in the Business. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll take a look at a rebellion inside of McDonald's in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Workers at this fast station were unhappy with waging and conditions and banded together to walk out. And in the good place, all the people came to die. For more on how this walkout took place, We'll speak to Greg Jaffe, national reporter at the Washington Post. Yeah, I think we just finally got to the point where, like, a lot of retail workers, we just sort of grew. And I think that caused him to blow up. Yeah, right. You know, they're paying 925 an hour in Bradford, Pennsylvania. The New York border is, like, 10 miles away, and there's a McDonald's maybe 17 miles away, owned by the same owner in New York State, where the minimum wage for fast food workers. Yeah, yeah. So these guys are making 925, which is 20 yeah, now, right. the same workers are making 15 for the exact same job. And as you can imagine, it's just really hard to keep workers under those circumstances. People were just leaving and they couldn't staff the store and they were getting blamed for their failure to staff the store. Yeah, and you know, everybody knows kind of the cascading effect, right? Uh, mistakes at the uh, ordering window, uh, mistakes with the food order, because you're getting into suppression and it's hard to keep up and all the training, you know, that's how you know bad things start happening here. So what was the turning point of the office for Dustin Snyder, who kind of organized the lockout? He, he called his other employees around and said, hey, you know, the he already accepted another job at a job, so he was kind of on his way out already, but he persuaded others there to do this lockout with him. Yeah, and that's exactly right. Yeah. I think the breaking point is like they all yeah, have right, the system right. is demanding more pay. And even though Justin accepts his job at the lumber mill, I mean, he likes McDonald's, he likes his co workers, he likes being a leader. And so they write this petition saying, you know, he deserves more than 925 pounds than that. It's a fairly salty, angry petition. He stops his get off to the corporate office of the franchisee and back to life. So I think that's about 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And get the message back saying, you know, officially, hey, we were considering giving you a raise. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 We don't care for this position. Mm -hmm. oh, because yeah. that just hasn't caused him to stop. Tells everyone around it and says, look, these people don't care about it. They treat it badly. And just this week, and I'll help everyone get out. Yeah, and I mean, I, I guess uh, maybe the facts couldn't have been as salty, right? <laughs> but then what happened? They grabbed everybody, they said, we're going to do it, we're going to walk out. They were the day shift, so they walked out, and uh, uh, immediately there's lines of cars at McDonald's. I guess uh, he called his general manager, and kind of, he was already on the way to the company as well, but he decided he was going to come down and support uh, everybody. And as you mentioned, uh, this part, uh, the assistant general manager, you know, he did say, I'm going to help everybody else try to get a better paying job. They knew of a burger king down the street who was offering more money. And just whatever they can do to help the crew that was walking out. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And so he does call his general manager, Stephanie at Sally. She's been with the company 10 years, and so she also decided to leave in the kind of the week before. Mm -hmm. Peter here. And uh, Joe's with him. Other folks just starting to leave as uh, Stephanie and Justin find out it's off. And so they walk out, the car goes to drive through. Stephanie texts the night shift crew saying, Hey, your day shift just walked out. You know, essentially, I think you could quit too, the call quit. But I respect whatever you do, you don't have to. And then uh, soon, you know, they're piling in the car to drive over to the Burger King and help everyone put an application there. As I mentioned at the, at the beginning, you know, we've seen other walkouts. There was a Burger King in Nebraska, Del Taco in Ohio. We don't really have any definitive numbers on these small scale walkouts. I guess the Bureau of Labor Statistics does keep track of them, but only when there's big major stoppages, you know, a thousand or more workers. But oh, that's kind of what we've seen throughout the country. 
especially as the pandemic hit and everything changed. I mean, so many stories are swirling around in the news right now about how the job market has completely been flipped upside down. And for these workers, low-paying workers, you know, working tons of hours, for the first time they saw a little bit of power. Hopefully, that they can get the yes, yes. in, in their favor, and that, you know that's why they did it. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. There's more in demand, and so that's part of it. And then the other stuff they can do is doing extra damage, just to demand, and the price of their mask, and kind of stress, and the pandemic, and the price of their mask. And I was putting more of some other company factors, like people not wanting to do it, and regulations, you know, finding what they have to do. For this particular McDonald's, workers have started off at 8.5 because of the pandemic. Uh, they do put a dollar to nine cents.